Help support our coverage with a free account on Privacy, the service that keeps you protected when shopping online. Get $5 to try it now by using promo code QZZ2J. And this will be a Kyle from Rendever, I think is the name of the company. So if we want to bring Kyle on, we can do that. Hi, Kyle. Hey welcome to our CES coverage. Thanks so much. It's a pleasure to be here. So why don't you go ahead and uh, introduce yourself, your position, and uh, what you guys are doing for CES 2021. Yeah. So, hey, everyone. My name is Kyle Rand. I'm one of the co-founders and the CEO at Rendever. You did pronounce it correct, which is rare. A lot of people will, will, will get it wrong sometimes. So um, kudos to you. Rendever is a full service end to end virtual reality platform that has been built specifically to reduce social isolation through the power of shared experiences and specifically through the power of virtual reality. So we've spent the past five years building a really really expansive platform that we now currently sell into senior living communities, hosp hospitals, hospice organizations. Um, we're in about 250 enterprise clients across North America, and we're getting ready really soon to go live in Australia, um, where we really, we use VR to allow people to do things that, you know, you might, you might get excited about, like travel, right? Go stand on top of the Eiffel Tower, go take a walking tour of Paris, go get in a hot air balloon for the first time, go swim with dolphins. Um, and we do it in a way, we've designed it in a way that really focuses on reducing social isolation through allowing people to experience these things together. Oh, and the reason, together. yeah, it's all, it's all about social. That's, 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 that's really the magic here. So, you know, oftentimes, and if you haven't had any exposure to VR, um, you know, VR is really pretty remarkable and some of the things that are being done today, it's come a long way since really its introduction. But just to think here that I can do VR together with someone, that that changes the ball game completely in my opinion. Totally, totally. I mean, you know, really what's nice looking back at this year, obviously we've all had a tough 2020 with the pandemic, but I think the, the big thing that we've kind of taken away as a silver lining has been for the first time, all of us have really experienced what it means to become socially isolated. And it's hard, right? It is. 2020 has not been the best year for any of us. And, you know, if you think about it, right, what we're experiencing right now, we, we see an end in sight. Come hopefully July 4th, we're going to have some sense of a new normalcy with vaccine distribution and we're going to be able to see each other and, you know, maybe be able to get on planes again. And next year, like, be able to go to CES and be in Vegas in person. The unfortunate reality is for people who reach this point in the aging process where they really need to be moving into senior living communities, that becomes their reality for the rest of their life, right? So, so they make that transition and they go from having, you know, maybe 80 years worth of experience in the world to all of a sudden that world shrinks down to the four walls of their community. And to be able to, you know, to have that transition, like it, it, it hits people hard. I know it, it happened to my grandmother. She had a pretty negative experience moving, moving in. Um, and if you look at the data, this is something that I think not a lot of people really know. Prolonged loneliness, prolonged social isolation is as detrimental to one's health as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. I believe that. Ultimately. Yeah. Like now, yeah. now having experienced it, you like really see it, right? And, and specifically within this demographic, it's been tied to a 30% increase in mortality rates, which is massive. And that comes from increases in hypertension and risks of stroke and heart attack, a 60% increase in risk of dementia. Uh, we're talking about diabetes, we're talking about depression, we're talking about increased risk of suicide, right? It's, a, it's something that really is significant and there's not enough work and understanding being put into, okay, how do we take this demographic, which is growing rapidly and allow them to, even if their world is physically shrinking, allow them to continue to build a vibrant social life. So, and we've had a lot of success doing that with VR. So let me ask you a couple, a couple of questions then on Please. application. So if you and I, and we're, I'm in Michigan, I don't know exactly where you're located, but obviously you're in a, re, a different area. Yeah. Can you and I experience something together? If I have a VR and you have a VR, even though we're separated by distance, can we do that with your tech or do you have to be together? Yes. So we originally started, so we're, we're focused on enterprise setting, right? So sure. we originally started for the past five years, it's been, 
great, we're going to give these communities a group of headsets, right? On average, six headsets, and they're going to bring people into the same room and they're going to have a shared VR experience. Obviously, that's not possible today. So we actually had a study funded by the National Institutes on Health and National Institutes on Aging to accelerate what exactly what you're saying, which is remote VR. So we have a platform that we, we have some really solid data from in which we're doing remote virtual family engagement where oh. you're, you're where you are. I'm here in Boston. We're wearing a headset. We're getting these experiences together. And throughout the experience, we're communicating through voice. And it's like voice is something that's supernatural, right? That's why like Alexa has become really big within the senior living industry because everybody knows how to communicate through voice and integrating VR into a full, or sorry, integrating voice into a fully experiential setting like a Rendever uh, session is, it's been really, really cool to see. And it's been really fun to see people actually kind of treat their VR headset like a cell phone, right? Because they pick it up and they start talking into it because they get that like vocal communication. So VR typically will take quite a little bandwidth as well. So you got to make sure that the infrastructure will support it. And nursing homes, I don't think are necessarily places where one would think that the bandwidth would be super good. So I'm sure you have to go in and put this infrastructure in and make sure they have enough bandwidth coverage to handle it. But also, if you're going to do re remote, remote VR things, there's going to have to be, how do you prevent the lag and stuff that we always experience when we're doing things like this? Yeah, so you might be surprised to know that actually the senior living industry is making really big moves in upgrading their Wi-Fi infrastructure. Wow. And that's because like, I mean, we're, we're, we're all becoming, we're all, we're all becoming like super tech focused, right? Our, our lives are empowered by tech and specifically the social side of our lives are empowered by tech, especially in within this past year. So senior living is making really big moves and we have some good partners who are doing um, pretty smart distributed Wi-Fi infrastructure within these communities. So there's a lot, there's a growing need for technology to empower people to continue to live really meaningful and fulfilling lives once they move into the setting. And as a result, the operators who are building these communities and managing them, they, they recognize first and foremost, that we need to get our Wi-Fi going. Secondarily, we need to get Rendever systems and VR headsets into, into here. And we need to use all this technology to really focus on building a thriving community. So uh, infrastructure changes are happening really fast. That's been going on for, for probably the past five years. So you've been focused on enterprise. And this elderly, so what's the next market? Is it because of COVID, you've made a little bit of shift and this family gathering type thing. Also, the second, and, and really, I guess the next question is, do we have an idea what this is going to cost if I wanted to connect with family members in Hawaii or wherever they may be? And I guess third, or maybe it's still second, but what do you typically, do you, do you source from VR, existing VR, or do you have your own catalog? Okay. Let's go, yeah, let's go. Let's go question through question. So we've specifically focused on the enterprise setting because yep. there's a big opportunity there, right? In which we're yep. congregating groups of people who are prone to loneliness because they just made that transition or yep. right within these communities they are congregated and now they just need help building really thriving social communities. So that's why we started there and we've seen a ton of success. Um, since then, we kind of, we, we have already been expanding across other enterprise settings that aren't just senior living. So we work with some um, disability organizations. Um, we work. We have one of the largest rollouts in healthcare. So we work with UC Health. Uh, Rich Zane actually just spoke on stage at CES yesterday, um, who's their chief innovation officer. So we've been partnering with them for three years. We just did a really cool story in which we actually leveraged. This goes to your third question. We worked with their partner, which is the Colorado Symphony, at the Red Rocks Amphitheater and filmed an entire orchestra during sunset at Red Rocks in VR and then brought it to patients as like a music and memory, or sorry, like a music therapy component for awesome. improving cancer patients. And the results have been overwhelmingly positive. So um, we're, we're doing a lot of things like that. And, and the impact, right? The thing that's magical here about when we think about content, we think about the experiences that we can deliver. There's so many things that are happening throughout the world, right? Like, I mean, if we were in Vegas right now, like there would be a plethora of options that we could just go to tonight and you know, sure. have, have a great experience. So there's so many people that are like spending their time creating and crafting and curating these experiences, but they don't get to deliver them to these demographics that really need them the most. So we're really excited about the partnerships that, that we've been setting up and, and working with groups like the Colorado Symphony um, to bring their content, bring their experience, bring, bring their life into these homes and these settings. Um, so we're almost out of time. Oh. Any, just any idea on cost? Do you, probably on a commercial, an enterprise level, that's going to be a custom. But if you move it, 
I don't think you're moving into the consumer side yet, are you? Or so yeah, we're 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 definitely talking about it actively with this study, right? We we have our distribution directly into the enterprise settings, but the next step is to make sure that the family members who are making this transition in, they have access to it too. So that's where we'll be focusing on the consumer side. Okay. Too early to share costs there, but I mean today we also have a great partnership with AARP Innovation Labs, um, and actually the Greater AARP Foundation right now, in which anybody with a VR headset with an Oculus Quest can go in and they can download Alcove and they can get a taste of some of the things that we do on the Endeavor. So that's that's currently publicly available. So what I want all of you to do is if you have a family member that's in assisted living and they do not have this accessible to them, I would inter tell them to introduce their staff, their administration to rendever.com. It's R-E-N-D-E-V-E-R.com. Have them check it out and maybe your loved one that's in assisted living would be able to access this type of content and have less isolation and be able to see the world that they more than well that they miss uh because i think we've almost all of us have probably had someone uh related to us that's been assisted living so thank you so much for coming on today we definitely appreciate it. it's very very cool kyle uh thank again you. good luck for ces 21 it's 2021 and uh and, and much much success to you Thank you. Enjoy CES. It was a pleasure. Right. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed that interview. And if you did, make sure you check out some of the more than 100 interviews we conducted during the virtual CES 2021 coverage. And of course, subscribe here on YouTube, hit the notification bell to learn when we post new content and when we go live.